Great relationships don't just happen. They're designed. Why leave love to chance when you can make strategic decisions in your relationship just like you do in your career? The days of settling for mediocre are over. Welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. And I'm Ken Hamilton. Join us as we explore the decisions and choices that make relationships work no matter what life throws your way. It's time to reimagine relationships from the ground up. Welcome to Project Relationship. Hey, everybody. So we're going to get to our episode in just a second, but I wanted to make sure that you heard about my latest offering because people have been asking, how can I work with Jolie? And I would love to work with you, but you all have such individual relationships. So I would love to see you pop into my next free live training. It's the best way. Yeah. My it's eyes, right, directly, your relationship. These are small intimate groups. We're just going to meet in Zoom and we're going to talk about what it is that you want and how you can get it. Go to my website, joliehamilton.com. Click on the work with Jolie tab. You'll see some live trainings and master classes coming up. Grab a spot at the next one and we'll see you in there. Hi, and welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. And I'm Ken Hamilton. We're going to do a follow-up episode to an earlier um, an earlier one. So I talk about jealousy a, a lot. Jealousy is an area of interest. You have spent a lot of time thinking, reading, writing about it. So there is a there's a, a another emotional experience that's tightly tied to it. Envy. I talk less about envy um, because it is distinct from jealousy. And I like to make sure that we keep these things um, separated because they're, when we glop our experiences together and we don't, you know, tease them apart and, and give ourselves language, it's, it becomes really tricky to follow the steps, to notice and name what's going on. That said, what I've found and seen is that many of the same issues that come up in jealousy come up in envy. And sometimes we just can't quite tell them apart at first. We don't really know what's happening. Um, so it's important to deal with envy and some of the same tools that we use to work with jealousy work with envy too. So hooray. That's awesome. That's cool. Um, and we talked about jealousy and, and what it was. So what's envy? Envy is, well, first off, envy is different from jealousy because jealousy is a three party system. It's a triangle. Jealousy is about a dyadic relationship. In other words, it's two people. Um, and you may, you don't need to be in a relationship with someone. Um, it's just the energetic connection between you and someone else that is creating a sense of, I wish I had that. I wish I were that it's the, the feeling, the perception of less than there's a big element of comparison Hmm. in envy. So, so this is different because Envy, so I study from a Jungian perspective, and envy was a a more studied topic in that world, because envy is considered a wound to the self, to the capital S self, your your higher self, because there's a, um, when we desperately wish that we were someone else, or we had what they have, there's an implicit um, statement behind that, that it's we're like not enough. Disregard of our that own we, self right, as That valuable. we aren't mm-hmm. enough or good enough or, or enough at all, like in some sort of essential way that we don't measure up. And so that wound to the self is very important um, to, a, to a Jungian perspective. And so I looked at jealousy because I was concerned with how insecurity and that sense of, of losing someone, of being, of having your love bond interrupted. I was very curious about how that worked, but envy kept coming up too. And one of the things that I found is people would interchange the words and they would just use these two words as if they were exactly the same. And that appears at first blush, at least to be a way that we can comfort ourselves. Most of us have a little bit more judgment about one or the other word. So you and I, 
repressed the word jealousy. We completely, yep. we were like, we outlawed the word jealousy early on. We were like, it's okay to be envious because envious is not about taking something away from someone else. You just wish you had what they have. Mm -hmm. And I hear the internal logic. Like I can see why I got there early on. However, it's less, this isn't usually about, wow, that person has a lollipop and I wish I had a lollipop. Envy is often a much more deeply rooted to self. Like, who am I? What's going on here? Um, am I good enough? Am I good enough? Am I wantable? Am I, do I measure up next to them? And so taking these two emotions apart, we can pretty quickly see that the issue of comparison, comparing ourselves to others is one of the big ways we injure ourselves. Yeah, so that's a, a, a dicey thing in so many ways because how, how do you compare two unique individuals? Um, but then the sort of expectation, the thing that leads to envy it seems to be, okay, so I'm comparing and I've decided I'm less. Yeah, there's And that the I thing. need this other thing that they have. So I've heard it said many, many times that comparison is the thief of joy. I tend to agree, mm. but you know, if I back out, comparison is sort of a mathematical process, right? Like it's like at root, isn't it just sort of a, like, I'm, I'm just looking at two things. It's a scientific observation. It's an so observational like an experience, observational right? experience. I'm comparing, okay. I'm, I am comparing and applying judgment to those comparisons is where the pain That's seems to come pain, in, right. right? So if I'm comparing, so if someone gave me a bag of marbles and I separated them into two groups by size, color, weight, um, texture, the, the beauty that I perceive in them, whatever, it's the separating act. It, it invites me to judge these different these these two different okay, these two so, distinct groups, yeah, right? Just dividing them not just on this feature, but on some value applied to them. Right. So mm. there there appears to be a lot of value judgment in, tied to the kind of comparison we're talking about. Okay. And I want to I'm going to make a a uh, a bold statement and say I don't think judgment is bad. I didn't even know that that was a bold statement um, until I was in my 30s. But so we need we need to be able to discern for ourselves. Yeah. What works for us, what doesn't. Um, discernment is incredibly important. And discernment is just another word for judgment. But judgment has the connotation in our in our current cultural milieu of being of being negative. If yeah. you're judging, you are doing something bad. Yeah, I, I see. Uh, I, I see and, and feel people saying, um, you're judging me. And the end of that sentence is as bad. But judging itself is a more neutral act. It's just right. discernment, but, like you said. Right. And then what we do with those judgments can easily start getting us into relational trouble. Yeah. And easily start getting us into the the kind of self-loathing trouble. So if I, if I categorize myself, if I, if I, if I compare myself to someone else and I say, I, you know, I, I compare myself to, let's say where somebody else is in their business and I find myself to be lacking. If I, if I measure their revenue or I measure their, um, their customer out, um, numbers, or I measure their number of, uh, media interviews, and I measure mine and I compare and I feel like I'm coming up lacking. Um, it, it begs the question, exactly why am I measuring this to begin with? But mm -hmm. then how do I know? Is it true that um, revenue is the only indicator? Is it true that media inter not like so often our comparisons are very narrowly defined. Like we've picked just a couple of ways that yeah. we're going to assess the value of something like one or two ways. And then that's it. But humans are complicated. Thank goodness. So I like to think of comparison these days as an opportunity to just get a, a view, a 
a one faceted view of a particular aspect of two different people. So I could, from a business perspective, look at a friend who's running a business and say, wow, they're having a really great revenue year. And maybe I look at my business and I say, I'm not having the revenue year I thought I was going to have. Maybe, maybe, I, maybe I wound up missing a quarter goal or something. I could easily do the same kind of comparison with my relationships. Um, I could look at the way, <laughs> well, actually it comes up quite a bit. People tell me all the time that I'm so lucky to have you in my life because their, their husband won't talk to them like this. And I think, okay, I hear you, but the comparison is based on a very narrow window into the yeah. reality behind that. Yep. Just like comparing my revenue numbers. Yeah, but I don't know what else is going on in their business. Yeah. If they made seven figures, but they spent almost all of it. it right. Does you that can't, really matter? Can't necessarily see that. Um, if, if someone's thinking, wow, he really talks to you and doesn't realize what else, the, the, the foibles, the stuff that we don't get right. Or they think that you just were born that way. And, and so I, I happened to luck out and get somebody who, who just did this. No, a lot of effort went into it, but right. you don't necessarily see, don't that. see that. So um, what do you think make, what, when does want turn into envy? Yeah. Because looking at something, someone, whatever, and saying, huh, you know, that's something that I'd like to have in my life. That's cool. Knowing what you want is important. Well, so this is how envy is like jealousy. It's a great indicator of something you care about and want. Like, oh, okay, cool. Thanks. Now right. I know. Didn't know I wanted that. Now I do. Um, I think that there's, there's a line inside that we cross where we, where we leave behind, we're, we're no longer talking about, I want this, but now we've applied a, a deep self judgment of like our core worth. And is that the that's wound the to self you were talking yeah, about? Yeah, this wound to self. This So when I say wound to self, I mean, imagine yourself with a great big sword and you're holding it up to some part of yourself and saying, you have, you have failed me you aren't, you have not delivered to me this thing that I want. I'm mad. And you Yikes. literally wound that part yeah. of yourself. This is, that's, that's not a stretch. The imagination is really capable of, of deeply um, harming parts of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I mean, one of the ways we do that is by cutting off parts of ourselves. We start to pretend we don't care. So at first, maybe I notice I have a desire for, for something that a friend or a colleague has. Um, and then before I know it, instead of moving myself toward my own version of that, instead I start negging myself. I start, you know, say t convincing myself that I am ill-equipped, unfit. Mm. So, and yeah. It, it, so what gets us there is, is one question. I'm curious about, but maybe more important from a practical point of view is, okay, I'm feeling it. What do I do? Yeah. So what are the moves I can make to like jealousy, envy isn't, um, it's not, it's not very simple to it. It, it has like, it's going to have a texture and a tone for you. And so getting to know what envy feels like, and how you can start to notice it really early, like that's going to help. So if you are the kind of person who's consistently comparing yourself to others, you might simply just, just decide to, to take note. Oh, I'm a comparer. I am comparing myself to other people. Okay. Um, let's, let me leverage that for what it's worth and start moving toward the things that I, that I say I want. But if you start noticing that you are consistently comparing yourself to, to others, probably the, the next action that needs to be really solidified in your life is affirmations and looking at your strengths and recognizing where you are and who you are and what you have done. So I think turning toward gratitude and oh. a, a deep awareness oh, of good. you having 
existed. Like you have your own existence. It's, I mean, there are so many cliche memes I could cite at this point, you know, don't compare your chapter two to my chapter 12. You know, you never know what's going on behind it. Like, sure, that's true. But just at core, just because you want something or you, or you envy someone else having something, it doesn't mean that you have to, you know, dive into that feeling. You could instead turn your attention toward gratitude for where you are and, and, and what you do have. And remember that we're all in process. Everyone's in process. Now, all of that said, <laughs> there are a lot of very real reasons, a deeply oppressive reasons, why this world is not fair. I don't think we can go any further without just calling attention to the, the systemic oppressions that happen that make it really so we can get caught in self-comparison and envy and, and even know like that the system is stacked against some people and not being willing to recognize how that system, systemic racism, systemic misogyny, how these things, um, systemic queer phobia, like how this impacts the individual experience. We, we don't all get dealt the same hand. Right. And, but if we're judging ourselves as if that were true, as if, you know, like, oh, if, if our, our yeah. internal experience is that they have it, so I should be able to have it too. But in fact, and that there's something <laughs> there's, wrong know, with me that I don't have it when there. in fact the system is stacked. So you work your whole life and you're not going to get the opportunities because the system's built this way. Right. Right. And, but not but to mention system, luck. And well, there's always luck, but, but the system is in fact designed to reflect that back onto the individual. And hustle culture tells us that if you just keep going harder yeah. and stronger and faster and longer, yep. that you, you can have everything you want except the system isn't designed to reward everyone equally. Right. The system is designed, in fact, to create inequity, the system that we live in. And yet here we are living in it. So to return to what I think I can do from, and I have a, I have, I hold a lot of privilege. Um, so I'm, I'm not talking about this from a, from from a, like, here's what I think you should do. But from my own position, when I get stuck in comparison, some of the things I can do a quick inventory on are, am I comparing myself to someone who has a lot of privilege and, and missing the fact that, that wait, 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 we're, we're talking completely different situations here mm -hmm. and just a allowing that to be true. Um, also, am I giving myself the credit for having overcome whatever. I mean, if you had, you know, an, a lot of adverse childhood experiences, if you um, faced profound trauma over the course of your lifetime, if you're, we're, you know, everybody's living in a pandemic right now, everybody's experiencing traumatic stuff and dramatic stuff. There's yeah. also just a lot of, mm -hmm. a lot of noise these yeah. days. We, it might be worth just, just taking an inventory why am I caught in comparison? Am I caught in comparison because it's serving me or because I, it's just my habit. My habit is oh, to compare good, myself yeah. to others. Cause that's where I fall in the hole for sure. My habit is to constant. I am a, I am a judger. I'm a, an ENTJ. I am like a discerner by nature. I'm always like sorting, sorting, sorting. And some of that is from my, my childhood being raised to need to pattern detect for danger of like, a lot. And so I'm always comparing. I'm always comparing, looking for safety, looking for a way to feel for... like I understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. And one of the easiest places to find fault is in myself. So I know that you come from a point of view that says that you are the one that you can control. Yep, so I you're do. always looking for the thing in you that you can change I have a strong to address a situation. Locus of control. Right. I do. Um, and it 
I also have this strong sense of um, responsibility to make happen, to, to make things right. Um, that drive has served me well, and yet it's easy to fall into the, this pit where envy is kind of all around. Um, one of the other things that happens, while it is a wound to self, it's also a wound to relating. If when you look out into the world, you're constantly comparing yourself to others, it's worth returning, like withdrawing that projection, like withdrawing the energy from that, um, from that comparison, because you're not seeing the whole picture. And it's, it's really hard to love someone who we are really envious of. Do you feel... And that, I mean, love is a verb. It's hard to right, act in to, loving to ways. Loving to, um, it feels to me like envy uh, breeds resentment. Really fast. Right, and that, it's really hard to be loving and caring to someone that you resent. Yeah. Uh, even though they didn't do anything, they just lived their life. And um, So here's where I use the tool of golden shadow. Oh, Okay. So um, shadow work, I think most people have heard of sh shadow at some point. By, it's it's just oh. all the stuff that's in the unconscious, right? All the stuff that we're not aware of. What about the golden shadow? So the golden shadow is different. So most people think about shadow and think immediately of like all the stuff I don't want to know about myself. So let's say I may not, not want to know myself as envious. So in fact, my envious parts I may ignore them for a very long time, but the golden shadow is all the stuff that we deeply value, intelligence or beauty or, or capacity or whatever, athletic ability, anything. These things that we, we value, we want, and instead of being able to own them, we project them out onto others. We see them in others and, and, <laughs> refuse to acknowledge that we carry that quality ourselves. Yeah. And in doing so, and, and envy plays a big role here. So there is a wall built between um I and thou, between between me and the one I am I am projecting this golden shadow all over because I can be trapped in this story that it doesn't let me actually see them for who they are. Right. And doesn't let for God's sakes, we can all be beautiful. <laughs> and that yeah. doesn't mean we're all symmetric. It doesn't mean we're all the same. We, we're all the know. same. It's not about like, sameness. Right? And it's like, not about comparison. But we, yeah. Even when it comes to objectively, you know, measurable things. I, if you, uh, more than one person is your height in the world. Yes. That's fine. Yes. But when we compare ourselves, often we're comparing stuff that we think we can control. We like, you know, we think we could change, we okay. should do, yep. right? And so we divide up and we're like, this person has these qualities. Okay, I guess those qualities are all used up. I mean, we're not consciously having that conversation, but unconsciously, it's like oh, all, they're of all used the, up. Like, all yep, of the beauty is so used up. Have any. All the athletic ability is used up. Oh my gosh, if they're good at something, it somehow takes something away from me. And then yeah. it's really hard to relate to that person. This came up over and over again when we were running a gym. We would watch people forget, just slip into a little, an envious reverie, if you will. Right. And, and, not, and okay, wait, screw that. Not people, me. Me. <laughs> me, me, it's all about me. Okay, I had such a thing about my sit-ups. Lucas, wherever you are, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I I was I had put so much self worth on the damn sit up. I have people. I have no words for how ridiculous this makes me feel and sound right now. Like, oh my! But it's a thing. God. Okay, so you I did. was really obsessed with like how fast I could do them and how well I could do them. Okay. And when somebody else could do them, I got really like three year old level mad. Like. Yeah so childish it was like my worst possible self not attractive not cool and it took it took years to realize what i was doing it was as if i thought the sit-up like draining the sit-up pool <laughs> no more left for me yeah that's am, a real thing that that is that zero i was a grown-ass like... woman when that was happening <laughs> i am i yeah okay so that's so embarrassing 
and yet true. And it's so simple. Like it's about how many sit-ups I can do in two minutes or whatever. Oh, so you're but I, so I was this operating on a zero sum mentality. Yeah. Like what the hell was that all about? And like there and like so you said there's more than one person my height. More than one person can be good at sit-ups. Yeah. 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 And, and so, so competitiveness comes into this. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And okay. this is where in, in our relating, it gets really messy because yeah. so we talk about consensual non-monogamy quite a bit. Jealousy is a big deal. But the thing is, we can also be caught in envy, envy of our partner mm -hmm. while they're dating. Maybe it's easier. Yep. Like I've had an easier time overall. Um, it's be, like getting first dates. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that it's been. It, like I'm not using up your access to Absolutely first dates, right. but, not it, but it's easy to get caught in that. Right. And, like and that. I can sit back. So this, I was going to say, so my envy, when it comes up, um, yours, you turn to yourself for the things that you could change. Oh yeah. I, I am so self recriminant recriminatory. I go a different way with envy. Envy is okay. So that person has, or is something I want. And so what I have done, and I'm working on this, and I've made some progress, but what I used to do is just automatically sour grapes it. Oh, yeah. It's or not even, the thing of, isn't even good anymore. <laughs> it's a little bit of that and a little bit of, well, no, actually, it's mostly that. And the result was that I would just not do anything to try to have it. Yeah. Like, okay, so this isn't valuable, so I won't do it. I'm just going to convince myself that my want is wrong. And, and so then and you would devalue the thing. So well, yeah. for an example. It's a good way to not get anything you want. <laughs> I, I think um, an example, though, would be, um, I, I, I'll i give this example. Please you tell do. me if I'm wrong. I... How about the first time I used your bow? Oh, sure. Yeah. So you were had gotten into archery in yep. your 40s. And you had a beautiful long bow made for you. And um, you'd been shooting and experiencing some success and it was going well. And I came over one day and nailed yeah. all the arrows yep. right in inside a tight pattern. And I hadn't picked up a bow in 25 years. Yep. That happens to be a skill that doesn't, for whatever reason, I cannot throw a dart. I can't even hit the broadside of a barn with a dart. So That's I don't understand. You hit the wall it, uh, constantly. Sometimes I hit the wall. <laughs> well, sometimes the floor. The floor, you, um, whatever. But yeah. But I remember, yeah, you you stopped going out to so, the bow. And that was my that was my envy move, is to just uh, avoid you the situation. You stopped seeing that whole thing. Yeah. Uh, and you so you set down something that you had really wanted to master yeah. something you wanted to get better at something you were enjoying and the, the way is, it was it wasn't like i was bad at it yeah this would there there it wasn't even as if it even mattered as we if weren't it even, even mattered. we weren't even I mean, we weren't hunting for food and no. we weren't and so what the heck so so the, i want to talk about the golden shadow a little bit because something you said made me realize okay so here's me and you yep and i look at you and you have something that i greatly value it's actually, I have two. Yes. I mean, There's, you're explaining right? the golden shadow better than I did. And so, Absolutely. so then I look at you and I am envious of you for this thing you have. And I resent you for having something I have. What? Yeah. It's really so it, twisted. It, it really is. So you really can get it twisted so fast. It's a fast. funny little knot. So a golden shadow that you're pointing to exactly the thing you have. The reason you're projecting it is because you do have it you have some either you have a seed of it or you may have it in droves but you can't accept it yeah, about you yourself accept it, right. so a good example for me here is um i had projected the idea that i could have friends i thought other people were friendly and i was not good at, mm. at like having friends at being around people i wasn't so i projected all of that onto my my, the, the best friend I had all through my 20s into my early 30s, I projected that all over her. And I was like, she's like the people person. She's the party thrower. She's the hostess. She does all the things. I'm bad at having friends. I don't know how to have friends. And I just disowned and disowned and disowned the fact that I had a huge circle of friends around me and I was valued by them. I, and I just continued to write that same story for myself. It was a wounded little pity story. And it, oh. it just kept digging deeper and deeper and deeper. So this is interesting. So this is, um, it's kind the golden shadow is kind of a face of envy. Mm -hmm. And, so. um, 
And what you just described is another kind of wound to self because you're, you're not acknowledging an actual part of you. Yeah. So not just Oof, not yeah. acknowledging a want, a desire, but I, I did. I was friendly. Yeah. Not the same way she was. It had a different look on me. It, it different feel. Um, intelligence is another place where this comes up a lot. Um, it, we we see someone else as very yeah. very intelligent. We disown it in ourselves. Often, a golden shadow will have its roots in what did our families need us not to be. My family oh, yeah. needed me not to be intelligent. Yeah. Or too intelligent, just intelligent enough, but not too intelligent. And so I cut that out and I projected it onto other people. And it was, it was a deep wound to myself and it blocked me from having the relationships I want to have. And that's what I, that's where I would want to wrap this up. Yeah. Envy is a block to the relationships you want to have. If you're talking about envy of a metamor, envy of a partner, envy of a friend, envy of a stranger who you might want to know better. Envy is a block to relating to others and to yourself. There are lots more things we could say about it, but for right now, I would invite you to just simply start noticing envy when it shows up and invite yourself to look at it with some curiosity. What's going on? What am I disowning? And until then, keep talking to each other. Hey, everybody. So we've talked quite a bit about how to do relationships, but I know a lot of you would really like to get my eyes on your relationships specifically. It's so worth it. And yeah, that's a bit of a hard thing for me to do for everyone individually, unless you're actually working in my coaching program. But good news, I'm doing some free live trainings. Yay, hey, that's, that's awesome. I mean, I get it all the time. I'm with you all the time. It's I get true. lots of training and, and you were just in one so... big free live training. And oh, wait, I'm... you pay for it. Okay, maybe I pay for it a little, <laughs> but you don't have to. Okay, so I would love to, to have y'all click on over to my website, joliehamilton.com. And if you click on the tab that says work with Jolie, you're going to see my latest offering for a live training. These are 60 minute master classes in how we can relate better. I'm going to be covering topics like creative monogamy, like how to transition into consensual non-monogamy, if that's your thing. And I'm also going to be talking about something that is really in my wheelhouse and something that we don't talk about on this show as often as we might, which is how to have a completely kick-ass relationship that really empowers you to be your full CEO mm -hmm. power player self. Right. So in my other world, I do a lot of business coaching. So bring it on. Bring it on. And you've all here heard us talking about our relationship and you have heard how she has addressed all of our issues in our relationship and how we talk about it. And she will turn that attention on you. And it is amazing what you can learn. Well. Wow. Thanks. And yeah, just jump on over. Love to see you in there. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for listening to the Project Relationship Podcast with Dr. Jolie Hamilton. And Ken Hamilton. If you're enjoying our conversation, we would be so grateful if you would drop a rating and quick review so more people will be able to find us. And if you have questions or suggestions that you of things you'd like us to tackle, please send an email to Jolie at JolieHamilton.com. I'd love to hear them. Project Relationship, the Entrepreneur's Action Plan for Passionate, Sustainable Love is available on Amazon in Kindle, soft, or hardcover versions. This book is a succinct, practical guide to improving your love life. I wrote Project Relationship to give you a set of quick action tools and conversation guides that can transform a mediocre relationship into a fabulous one. These tools are based not just on what Jolie learned in her studies, but on what we actually do to make our relationship thrive. Until next time, remember, relationships can be messy, and that's good news.